Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use ES Presence to track Bluetooth devices with the ESP32 and how to send that data directly to AWS IoT. Now, if you've never heard of it, ES Presence is an open source firmware based on the ESP32 microcontroller that turns the controller itself into a Bluetooth presence sensor. It's incredibly useful for smart home and industrial IoT projects where you want to detect devices in specific rooms, monitor occupancy, and even trigger automations based on this process what makes it even better is that es presence can communicate over mqtt which makes it incredibly easy to reroute your messages to AWS iot at a scalable low cost way for collecting and processing your iot data so whether you're building dashboards triggering alerts or just experimenting with iot this setup gives you a rock solid foundation to build a really cool iot project now before we get into the tutorial for today please be sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel we do a lot more iot content on this channel not just with presence detection but other things such as raspberry pi sensors and many other types of embedded systems projects so be sure to hit that subscribe button because you will sincerely benefit from this channel if you are interested in the iot space anyways grab your esp32 and let's get started with how to set things up first with the aws side of things and eventually we will get to the microcontroller and show you how to get that set up there end to end Okay, so in order to get started, first thing is we just want to set up the foundation for our AWS account to start receiving messages from our ESP32. In order to do that, make sure you are signed into the AWS console. And once you are in the console, you can just go to the top and search AWS IoT, which is the service we're going to be using. It's IoT Core. Sorry, so we could just search IoT Core here. I'm already there. Once you click it, you will see the exact same thing as you are seeing here. And once we're in IoT Core, we just want to create a thing and a policy for that thing, which is essentially controlling the communication and messages we can send to AWS. So in order to do that, we just want to go to the left here and we want to go to things. And this thing will be our ESP32. So this will manage the policy around the ESP32. Go to create thing, create a single thing, and we could just name it whatever we like. We'll just call it ESP32 device. Okay depending on how you want to name this. And we could just keep the base policies, auto generate a new certificate recommended. So we could just go ahead and do that. And then we want to create a policy. This will manage the types of operations that thing can do with MQTT and other types of stuff that are a little more advanced. So what we want to do is we just want to attach a couple of statements here, just generic things you want to do with most MQTT brokers. So you want to be able to connect you want to be able to publish mes messages, receive, and you also want to be able to subscribe. So just do that. And we could just do star for the policy resource. That is fine. And once we have this, we could just give the policy a name. So we call it ES presence policy. We go ahead and create, which is fine. And then once that is created, we will see that it's available here now to attach to the thing. So the thing will have this policy and we can go ahead and create this thing. And finally, once this thing is created, we could just go ahead and download all the certificates we need. So these certificates are important because we'll be using some of them in our MQTT broker locally to actually authenticate and be able to send messages to AWS. Otherwise, they will reject your MQTT messages. So make sure you have those downloaded and go ahead and close this. Now let's go to the local side of things where we'll be setting up our MQTT mosquito broker to forward those messages from our ESP32 to AWS IoT Core. Okay, so as we mentioned, we'll be using Mosquito in open source MQTT broker. Now this is their official website. What pretty much this is allowing us to do is it's allowing us to forward messages from the ESP32, which is producing those Bluetooth messages. And unfortunately, we can't send messages directly from the ESP32 using the ES Presence firmware directly to AWS because ES Presence out of the box does not support the communication needed for AWS to actually receive those messages securely. It needs something called TLS, which we'll be using this middleman here to send messages to the TLS port on our AWS IoT broker. Now, I know that sounds like a lot. Just think that the Mosquito is pretty much taking those messages from our device and it's just forwarding it to AWS in a secure way. So this is their official documentation here. I refer you to read that if you are interested. This is probably the most popular MQTT broker because it's open source and it's incredibly easy to set up. Now, we'll be setting it up on the Mac OS operating system. On every operating system, it's slightly different to set it up locally so i'll be running the commands if you want to set it up on windows or linux you can find the documentation and learn how to install it it should be simple but it will be very similar where you're just going to run commands in a a cmd or a terminal and you will install the broker so i am in my terminal on the mac so 
these instructions are Mac focused, but once again, if you are using Windows or Linux, you should be able to follow along very similarly and more information on those operating systems in the blog down below. So we're just going to install MQTT Mosquito. In order to do that, we just want to brew install Mosquito and we want to start Mosquito. So go ahead and click that. And once that is done, we will go to the next step, which is we are going to configure some settings with our Mosquito MQTT broker. Okay, so now that Mosquito is installed and running, next thing is we simply want to set up a username and password to access this Mosquito server, which is required for the ES Presence firmware, or it's more secure to do so. So in order to do that, we just want to run another command and that is Mosquito password dash C in the pass the path to the password file, and then the name of your user, which we'll just call username. It's not very smart user, but we'll just call that. And the password for the sake, we'll just call one, two, three, four, five. And this is what we'll be entering in the ES Presence firmware to communicate with our local Mosquito MQTT broker. So go ahead and click enter again. And it says warning, you can just ignore that warning. And now we just have this information. We'll be putting that later in the next step on ES Presence to actually communicate with this broker. Okay, the last thing we want to do in our terminal before we actually get on the ESP32 and download the firmware is we just want to modify one more file and that is the mosquito config file. We need to drop some settings in here that will tell the the mosquito broker to actually forward those messages to AWS and we're going to pass it the certifications we need. So I just went ahead to the very bottom and I just pasted this content from listener to the bottom here. So let me just briefly explain it and what you need to replace here. So we're just listening on port 1883, which is where we're going to receive messages from the ESP32 itself. Okay, and then we're going to pass in that password file as you see here, which is the one we created. And we're just going to create a bridge. This is just going to be the bridge between our, our ESP32 and AWS. And so we have this address here, and then we have port 888. Eight, three, which is the TLS port. In order to get this address, you just want to go back to your AWS account and you want to go to your domain configurations here and you just want to find the domain name. So you can just go ahead and copy this domain name and paste it there. And then we just want to pass in three paths here. So you downloaded a bunch of files. Really the only files we need is first we need the path to the Amazon root CA1.pem file, which you can replace here. So I just replaced the full path to that CA1.pem file. The next Next, you have to replace the full path to your certificate.pem.cert file. So you see it's a pretty long name for that file, so make sure you get it right. And then also you want to pass in for the bridge key file, you want to pass in the private pem.key. Now, once you have that, we just have some typical bridge behavior here. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. And finally, we're going to forward this topic. So this is the ES Presence Devices topic. So this is actually the topic your ES Presence firmware will send messages to when it detects a Bluetooth device. So it'll be sending messages to this topic. So we'll be waiting for messages to come from the ESP32 on this channel. And we're going to forward all of those messages to AWS IO2. So that's pretty much all we are doing in this file. So make sure you have this pasted in, you substitute the paths here as needed, and you substitute the address, and of course the password file and that sort of thing. Everything else can stay the same. And once you have that, you can just go ahead and save this file. So we just do this and we can save this file. And once we have that saved, we can just do restart mosquito. And then our broker will be running with the new settings once that is done. Okay, so now that we have our Mosquito broker configured, we can finally install the ES Presence firmware, which will allow us to actually track the Bluetooth devices in our area. In order to do that, we just want to go to espresence.com slash firmware. Of course, you can read a bunch of stuff on their documentation and learn more about ES Presence here. And you want to have your ESP32 plugged in on your laptop at this point. And we are just going to go to connect here. We should see the device and we are just going to install ES Presence. So go and just erase the device and we can go ahead and click next and give it a few minutes to install. Okay, now once ES Presence is installed, it's going to prompt you to put your network name. So just put your internet name and password. So go ahead and do that and connect. So configure it, it does take a moment to connect there. Now, sometimes it is a bit finicky. You can see I put my correct internet name and password. That is fine. Sometimes I notice even if I put the right one, it says timeout, which is wrong. So we can go ahead and skip and we can go ahead and just click X here. And typically what I like to do at this point is I like to unplug and plug my ESP32. Okay. 
So once that is unplugged and plugged, we just go ahead and connect again, and it should allow us to actually visit the device this time, so good. Looks like our device is connected to the internet successfully. So if you're on this page, your device is successfully connected to the internet. And now you just want to put some parameters here. So you want to put the room. So room is just essentially the name of the device, and we could just call it apartment. So we could just do that and we can just put the mosquito server here so in order to get the mosquito server actually what you want to do is you want to get the ip address of your computer on your local network in order to do that we just want to go back to the terminal and on the mac we can actually run a command this is ip config command get if addr en0 so you can see i i entered that and i got the ip address of my computer on my local network. So you want to do the, uh, the same thing if you are on a Mac, similar thing if you are on a Windows or Linux. And once we have the server IP address, we can go ahead and just do this. Port is 1883. And then the username is just the username we set up earlier, which is just username. And the password is 12345. And that's pretty much all we want to do here. So let me just enter the username one more time, make sure I did it correctly. And password is 12345. And we should be able to save and restart the device and these settings should take place. So once we restart this, what's going to happen is that our ESP32, and that's fine, sometimes it does this when it restarts. You know, this, fir this firmware is a little finicky. So it looks like our settings are saved. So what, what's going on right now is this ESP32 is measuring Bluetooth devices in our area, measuring parameters such as the closeness of the Bluetooth device, the strength of the signal, and that sort of thing. And it's sending it to the MQTT broker on our local computer on this IP address along this port. And those messages are being forwarded to AWS IT. So if everything is as expected, what we could do is we can go to AWS and look at the messages coming in at that MQTT channel and see if we are getting messages from the ESP32. Okay, so now finally, we just want to go back to our IoT core. We just want to go to MT MQTT test client on the left there. And we just want to see if we're receiving messages. So we could just use the hashtag character and that will show all the messages our IoT core is receiving from all of the connected uh, TLS connections that are sending messages. So once we do that, we can go ahead and click subscribe. And if everything is running as expected, which it should be at this point, you should start seeing messages and it looks like it is the proper payload. So we're receiving ES presence devices and then it's followed by the device. So that is the MAC address of the Bluetooth devices in your area then followed by the apartment. So this is the, the name we called the ES Presence device. And you can see we have some stuff in the payload here. We're not gonna go into this payload at all in this tutorial, but what this payload is pretty much saying is telling you the distance to that Bluetooth device. It's telling you the strength of the signal and it's telling you some other information here, which is important. Of course, this is the tip of the iceberg of the things we could do with ES Presence to measure detection of Bluetooth devices in our area. This opens a, a whole world of IoT applications we can create around this infrastructure, which is pretty cool. And we saw how to do it end to end to actually measure Bluetooth devices with our ES presence with a free firmware for those messages to AWS securely and finally view them in the AWS IoT core. And yeah, that's pretty much it end to end. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more on ES presence, let me know in the comment section down below. I sincerely believe it's a powerful technology and really awesome because you can build some cool IoT projects regarding presence detection, which is be a huge thing, frankly, in this field nowadays. And also, if you guys have any questions or concerns regarding this video, let me know in the comment section because I know we went over a lot. Hopefully you guys got it working and if you did please be sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel that would mean a lot to me to so continue supporting shilla tech to allow you guys to thrive as engineers and to continue making awesome iot projects that pretty much sums it up for today i will see you guys in the next tutorial thanks for watching and take it easy